I love these kind of days. It's just like overcast, uh, rainy. Very cool. Usually rain is good too because it keeps keeps people away, especially nonsense people. <clears throat> Evil doesn't like uh, water, I guess. So. It used to be that way, too, like when I live in a bad neighborhood. You know, there's been a, a few different bad neighborhoods in my life. And um, whenever it snowed or rained, uh, things would really relax in the neighborhood. Like, there wasn't a lot of crazy shit going down during winter, like when I lived out in Lawrence. Wintertime is usually the murder if you go down. You know, uh, aggravate assault things like that would go way way down um just because well the cold up in the northeast I mean that just keeps people indoors you know but um so i always i love this kind of weather not because of that but i mean it's partially because of it i was uh making some people see it over on instagram uh with this it probably would have worked better on um Twitter, but I don't really go on Twitter. You know, I'll, I'll post memes there when I'm putting ones on Instagram sometimes, but I don't really, I don't really use it. I, I don't dig it. Um, but yeah, I think this is the way to go. If you're like a white-skinned person, uh, you want to lean into this. Now, for me, I'm. Uh, 100% both sides all the way back as far as the lineage goes as far as we've been able to discern My great-grandparents on both sides came off the boat <clears throat> All of a sudden and then when they came off those boats man They didn't have the luggage that you have today. There's a lot of chests that were sitting around and some members of the family um, I ended up with one for these big wooden chests with these metal latches and shit and that's what they traveled with I can't imagine what that must have been like on a boat that whole way with, one, with these things. Ornate boxes, like very heavy wood, heavy metal pieces. They looked awesome if you put them in like your room or something, but I can't imagine going across the ocean. Money. But even if you don't have 100% in one way, just pick whatever you got. If you're half German, half Italian, whatever, just pick one and really lean into it and reject the the white person uh, tag and go with your your um your background your what the fuck the, I, li I love when these like simple words evade me nationality thank you ding 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 go with that because what that does is it gets you out of the trap the white trap, um, the whole white people thing, and uh, white people don't have culture and stuff. It's a fake group of people that were created to put people with white skin into, so then they can control uh, how to exploit things against them, like racism, or how to just attack them. Um, it never existed growing up. Like that was. It was just never a thing, you know? Uh, no matter how, you know, when we had plenty of diversity. We had uh, Armenian people in my friend circles. We had Irish, French, German. But these days, all those different kinds of people just mean white. And diversity means just black people. Like I always say, it's an inversion. You know, they the world things they present to you it's inverted it's like they'll tell you up is down down is up you know that whole thing so that's what that is really it's like uh look at eye color white skin people you got blue green like a hazel hair colors all these different colors that's not diversity diversity is brown eyes and black hair uh that's not true and we can all see that and that's why like this kind of shit isn't a problem for me it kind of doesn't bother me because they can scream about it as much as they want and it's not like 
it's not the actual people's fault. Like, it's not black people's fault or anyone else's fault. It's the hats or, you know, the media, the people involved with them have created this, this paradigm. And, um, and they're pushing people into, into acting out on it. Um, but when you look at it, you just know it's not true, right? Just like the new beauty standards, like we look at here with Victoria's Secrets, where they have the uh, obese models. And they try to tell you that's, that's beauty now. No. I mean, it's not even worth discussing because you can look at it and go, that's, that's clearly bullshit. That's not true. The whole white thing, as a group of people that have no culture, began with Barry Satoro. Um, when he became president in 2008. And I've told the same like kind of story before. Basically what happened is, you know, all the white people voted for him. All, now I'm doing it too. Everyone voted for him, right? And then uh, one of his agendas was to, to bring back more racism. That was one of his, each president has a list of things they have to do. This is all pre in advance, set up, all this stuff. It's it's all predetermined, planned out. So one of his things was to bring that whole deal back. And he didn't waste any time. He didn't waste any time. I think even at the inauguration, uh, he, he made something and he, he mentions it like, well, I know a lot of people in this country. Uh, Michael and I have noticed, but we aren't very happy about black man's president. And it's like, everyone, all the black people in the country, it's like they all just kind of turned and looked at the rest of us like, what does he mean? And we're all like, I don't fucking know what he means. We don't, you know, there was, I tell you, I mean, I know it's hard for people to understand and they probably won't believe it, but pretty much after the civil rights movement, the late 60s, when that all went down, there's a lot of fucking shenanigans there too, but I'm not getting into that today. Uh, things were cool. Racism was not a problem at any time in my life until he came in. Was not a, I mean, of course people were racist. There are always people that are going to hate white people because they're white or whatever. People who hate Indian people. There's always going to be that, right? But it wasn't uh, so out in the open. It wasn't a contentious battlefield. Um... And even in private circles, like, you know, for instance, my friend circles, no one was running around dropping the N-bomb. That shit was verboten. Not out of the fear that it's out of these days, but just out of respect. It was looked down upon. Like, And I had a lot of different kind of friend circles. And if you, if you were dropping an N-bomb, people just thought you were an asshole. Like, what the fuck's your problem? Now, on the other side... Uh, what we didn't know is that uh, the opposite was what we were learning was everybody's equal treat people as you should like to, as you want to be treated the other side wasn't really doing that the other side was teaching the opposite like to fear and hate and uh, it wasn't uh, it's, your, it's their fault that everything's fucked up but it was still underground it wasn't out in the open when he uh when he got in and started talking that shit, it just came right up to the surface. You know? Like, I always knew. I always... It's like, no, guys. You, you're gonna fall for this shit. Well, yeah. Whatever. But, um... And then from there, uh, around that time developed the concept of white people. Which, prior to that, wasn't ever a thing. And I'll take the, the Pepsi challenge against anyone with that. I don't have a great memory for certain years for certain things. Some things uh, uh, I purposely don't have a great memory for. But for that, I fucking remember that. There was never any talk of racism. When a, when a movie came out and a black person was on, like Eddie Murphy or whoever the big box stars at the time, uh, it was just like, oh, that was a new movie. No one ever mentioned there's a black guy in the movie. You know, if you mention them by name or the actor by name, yeah, you can see they're a black, but was an issue. Same thing with, with uh, homosexuality. You kind of knew who gay people were. You didn't give a fuck. It's like, oh yeah, I get, 
always had them around me, you know. So it's like, it was way more chilled. People just accepted people for how they were. But that's not a good atmosphere to uh, bring in this sort of end times chaotic madness that they needed to have. So they had to uh, pit everyone against each other, get the slaves fighting. Now every single kind of person is against every other single kind of person. And, and to facilitate this kind of conflict, they needed to put us, people like me, in a box uh, by our skin. Like, okay, well, we'll collect all the Europeans and all the, the northerners and uh, from the Caucasus Mountains, and we'll, uh, we'll give them the pack white person. Now they're their own group that can be pitted against all these others. That's bullshit. Now, a lot of these spells, a lot of these things these guys, these weirdos do, they're very easy to undermine. I was trying to uh, hint around how, like, for instance, recently, I was trying to hint around how the trans thing could be used against it. I don't, I'm not, you know, I gotta be careful with that so I didn't get too into it, but all the thing, it seems, this is how it seems to me. The bigger and the more widespread the spell is used, uh, some kind of form of social control, uh, the, the more simple the Achilles heel is. Like, it's almost like you, you spread this blanket across so much space, it's going to be thin, it's easy to poke a hole in. And then, once you do, the integrity of the whole thing disappears up its own fucking ass, you know? So it's easy to, it's easy to poke a hole in this shit. If you, uh, you know, think about it abstractly enough, you know? And they got people so fucked up and retarded with, all, with the world the way it is. No one's really giving a lot of thought to this. But as far as this thing goes, you've got to reject that, that label. Uh, meaning, don't argue for that. Don't, uh, you know, if you see it, if someone's trying to put you in that situation, uh, the way out is just to simply uh, go with your nationality and take it an extra step and try to be a little extra loud about it. Like, oh boy, I love being Italian. Italians are this, Italians are that. You know, Italian power, that's what I'm doing. And, um, and it makes people so incredibly mad. Now, there's some, some guys from black dudes that are just like straight up like, fuck, Irish men, they ain't good. It's like, there's always gonna be people like that that are just gonna be, that'll go for the easiest thing, the easiest attack. And I had some of that, but uh, for the most part, they don't know what the fuck to do. Because they're like, well, well, it's like, are you going to say the Irish don't have a culture? We don't have a very rich culture. And the thing that, that kills them the most is, is the slavery thing, like the Irish slavery thing. I didn't even know until my 30s that the Irish were enslaved. Because uh, we don't talk about it. It's just not a part of the culture there. Uh, we tend to focus on the other things, art, music, poetry, creative. There's a lot of creative type stuff. Creative type stuff. And unfortunately, there's a lot of, uh, you know, the, the troubles are a big part of the culture, unfortunately. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff to talk about um, than something that uh, happened to us centuries ago that, I mean, what are we going to do? We, we don't want, we're not trying to get anything from it. You know, there's a lot of, they have a lot of other dogs on the fire, the Irish people. But I guess sometimes if you can't find something to kind of hang your hat on for your own thing, uh, you know, you focus on whatever you can. And, um, and then that's what happens with the black community too. It's everything is sort of based around race. And a lot of that, it's not even their fault. It's the media and the hats, you know, telling them every day. You know, it's like they're always kind of whispering into their ear, like worm tongue style, like, you know, Tyrone, if it wasn't for your white Trump loving neighbor, you would be the king of Antarctica. You would have been the president. You could at least have been an astronaut. You know, get this going on all day. All day. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, so what do you expect to have happen? But make, make the target hard to hit, you know. Uh, and by making the target hard to hit, just embrace your nationality, embrace that culture. And then just when someone, 
tries to say white people have no culture just because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm not a white person. I'm Irish. I'm an Irishman. This this made up group that you've created uh, post 2008 doesn't apply to me. Of course, there's no culture. It doesn't exist. It's a thing you guys made up. Not them, but the masters, the farmers. I don't. They're not masters to me, but um, with which they can then use to create friction and division. It's a made-up thing. It's not real. So you don't have. I mean, reject the white tag when it comes to you. You know, you don't go. Here's what you do. You don't go around. Um, and I'm talking about social media spaces or, or wherever, like whatever conversation, however you want to you want to do this. Instead of going around making a big idea about, oh, I'm not white, I'm not white, so there's intelligent saying all that. You know that, right? Instead, uh, just be like, you know, the French are, <laughs> they're some of the, the greatest poets and writers in history. Our, our architecture is just, just be very pro, very pro your nationality. And use the word pride a lot. You know, French pride, Irish pride. I use Irish power. You know, you can get away with all, you can get away with everything that they would uh, try to attack you for if you were using the white tag. And, um, you know, the seething is great, but uh, it serves a, a bigger purpose. Um, and that's, if you don't claim an identity and choose one, Unfortunately, this world is going to put one on you. Don't let them put you in the white box. You don't want to be in the white box. Because then when you're in the white box, then it can tie to white supremacy. And white people. And white people. And then you get all that shit. You know? All that shit that uh, a Korean guy doesn't have to deal with. Because he's Korean. Right? Well, I'm Irish. I don't know what group you're fucking talking about here. I don't know what this invented group is, but... Uh, it got nothing to do with me. Irish power. I love my people. I love other people too, right? I have nothing against anyone else. I just love my people the most. Because that Irish people, I can you know, relate to them. We have a lot of things in common. We have a homeland in common that is our homeland. Uh, if you move there from Haiti, uh, it doesn't mean that's your homeland. That, that's, that's our homeland. You're an expat or you're a transplant from Haiti. This whole new concept too of if you're standing on the dirt you are the nation. No, that a nation is people. It's not it's not an arbitrary fucking border. This stuff is easy to dismantle um, if you don't let your emotions get the best of you and you just kinda try to be logical and be proactive. You know what I mean? Be proactive with it. Like, you know, Irish power, you know? Irish pride. I like, you know, I love Irish people because it's, be proactive with it. Don't let them tell, don't let them control you in that situation because they will put you in the shit box and then try to attack you. You know, fuck these people. It's a spiritual war. Spiritual war. Irish are number one, man. Don't blame the teacher, blame the school.